This, um, the house is, uh, the houses are located uh, here on a hillside overlooking uh, Lake Chapala. This is the uh, guest house that we're staying in, in Villa de Vinca. And uh, this is some of the, the leftovers from the flood that happened here in 2007 and washed these rocks down from the mountain and actually destroyed a couple of the houses. But we'll hear about that. Early summer here and things are in bloom, so it's quite lovely and they're expecting the rain soon, which will bring more flowers and, and more growth. And if you take a view of the homes, because all these homes were part of the flood. Uh-huh. And were destroyed. Not as quite as bad, but they... Yeah. And this house over here, tell me about this, what happened to this house. This is one of the guest houses, right? This, the, this one here? Yeah. Uh, this is one I lived in originally. <laughs> All right. And uh, I was here almost six years. Uh -huh. In this house? And in, in this house, got it all decorated. Okay. Had a wonderful time and party. This one was destroyed. And so it was pretty completely destroyed. I think we have some pictures of that. Not completely. <coughs> this is the end of the house over here uh -huh. where my bedroom was. Okay. But the structure stayed enough to where they could re yeah. rebuild. And, and were you telling me yesterday that you actually got tumbled down the mountainside with a boulder, yeah, hanging onto a big boulder? Uh-huh. And all these doors were already gone. Okay. So I grabbed a hold, and this was bent down here, but I grabbed a hold of it. And that was all with water and mud just yeah. shooting through here, huh? Yeah. And then when the first flood stopped, I crawled over to this and tried to hide behind it. Behind this big and rock? That didn't work. Did this get washed down too? No, I mean, no, was... no. This, this is big enough to stay here. Uh-huh. But it took the whole wall out. Uh-huh. All this wall, and then my car was here. And that picture is, uh, that you see. Yeah, we have a, a picture of the car was parked here and it got washed all the way down the hill, huh? Well, I watched it go downhill. Right, <laughs> right down where, where these plants are here. Okay. Huh. Pretty scary ride. All this rock is here now because of the flood. There was no rock here. Period. Person in the flood. Uh -huh. What happened here? Oh, I had scratches all over. Uh, Contusions. I had, and... I had to climb up back up the mountain uh -huh. on my hands and knees because I couldn't walk with all the rocks. All right. My brother was over here uh -huh. watching me go down, so I crawled <laughs> up. I yelled at him, and we went over to the to that house because it had already quit flooding yeah. over there. Uh -huh. All right, so over here, where we are now is uh, kind of a lower level from the estate, and what we're going to do, or, or the main house, I guess we'll call it, huh? Uh, we're going to walk up the. Uh, <clears throat> the stairs here through the gardens and uh, and all the stairs are brand new all the gardens have been redone all these gardens have been washed away and replanted now or recreated <laughs> hey so beautiful and peaceful all these years. Then when I lost the house, I had to go live in you know, some rental homes because there was no electric or water, plumbing in any of the property. Uh -huh. So I moved back over here in this house because it was the least destroyed. They put up, all it had was new, uh, new floor. Uh -huh. And I moved back into it. And uh, they had a big barrel of water out, outside, and I used that to wash my dishes and fill the uh, toilets up. Yeah. 
now you can see if you look up this hill, that's a pretty steep arroyo. Yes. <laughs> and lots of big rocks up there. And the water was dumped on top, um, on this side of the top. <coughs> okay. That's what happened. So, um, Larry, you told me you were telling me before that you've you've traveled quite a bit. Could you kind of start at the beginning and tell me how you came to live here? You know, but where had you been before? Well, this this was quite by accident. <laughs> I'd planned everything else, but uh, Jerry, my brother, uh, said I have a surprise for you for your birthday in 1994, and I, he never told me where we we're going, and then. We got to the airport and it was all aboard for Thailand. <laughs> so Bangkok. Uh-huh. And we went to Thailand, fell in love with that. I've never been afraid to travel. You know, I've always been curious about life. But then I got sick over there and Thailand's a half world away from San Francisco. And uh Oh, this this is barbecue. Yeah, let's step over here in the shade for a minute. It's pretty hot today. Yeah. Well, this is May. April, May. And here we have uh, the Queen of the Pool. Yes. Red Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you don't have to go that far up, you know. Oh, that's suntan lotion. Yeah. Uh, this is where we had a lot of fun. Uh-huh. A lot of parties. A lot of, a lot of grilling. And, yeah, lots of parties here. <laughs> Now this is a nice little grotto. This just be filled with booze and food. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you came here, uh, you went to Bangkok, well, and then I, where I else did Bangkok, you go? And I I had already lived in Puerto Varta for three years. Uh -huh. And I met this lady that owned a restaurant, and I helped her out for something to do. And I called her from San Francisco, and I said, I'm home, I'm ready to go back to Puerto Varta. She said, why don't you just stop by here? And I'd been here 29 years ago. Uh -huh. That's curious. So I said, okay, I'll come and visit for a couple of weeks before I go home to Puerto Varta. And uh, I've stayed ever since. I <laughs> fell in love with the village. The people, the lifestyle, especially the culture, because you know, the, the husbands take care of the kids when they're not working. In the Mexican culture. The Me well, yeah, the Mexican culture. And, uh, you know, the women take care of the kids during the day while the men are working, but the men come home and take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And I, I was very impressed, because that doesn't happen in the States. And instead of running to get some place, and, you know, you never get there anyway, down here it took me about a year to learn how not to worry about time because the first year it, Mexicans don't have have time and they don't like to give you bad news the same concept of time yeah and but they don't like to give you bad news so they won't call you if they're not coming mm -hmm. that's true <laughs> I learned that and I confirmed it with all every American down here <laughs> uh -huh. so in the word manana doesn't mean tomorrow it's supposed to it just means the next time they get here. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, and you have to learn their culture. So manana could be tomorrow or next month. Uh, yeah, or an hour from now. Uh -huh. But uh, it's just like the word uh, bueno. You answer the phone, bueno. 
Well, it doesn't mean hello. Mm -hmm. Hola means hello. Yeah. That confused me, but people say bueno down here. <laughs> so, you know, but that's why I like the culture. <clears throat> I like this, this slow living. Mm -hmm. Nothing excites the Mexicans. Even in death, it doesn't excite them. They accept it because they get to go visit once a year the cemetery mm -hmm. on the Day of the Dead. And, and there's a funeral going on down the hill today, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the beginning mm -hmm. of tomorrow. And tomorrow they'll bury him. They must have died today. Uh -huh. And uh, so they'll be buried tomorrow. But it, Mexicans see death as, you know, they're going to go bury them because they don't embalm them, so they have to bury them fast. Mm -hmm. And then they, every year on the Day of the Dead, they go visit. The whole family decorates the graves. And it's beautiful. I, I took pictures of that last year. And they go visit every year. Mm -hmm. They bring their, their beer. The men bring their beer. The wives bring all the food. They party. And that's the day they get to visit the dead. Yep. And so I, you know, the next day they come back to work. <laughs> you know, after somebody's died, yeah. they come back to work that day or the next day. So you've been uh, you've been here a long time, and you obviously like and appreciate the culture. Uh, you don't speak Spanish, do you? Or not much? No, I say Spanish. Uh -huh. I don't do conversational Spanish. Okay, so you know some Spanish vocabulary yeah. and so but on. My first six years, I didn't have a car, so I took the <coughs> bus, which is an experience all by itself because I could have a beer <laughs> or a cocktail on the bus. <laughs> Usually, they, they didn't close the door on the bus. And uh, they, there's no back then. There was no bus stop. When somebody's standing on the side of the road, you picked them up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd charge you, or he'd just say hi, and then, or he would stop and go shopping in the store, <laughs> and then come back out and drive us. You never had any idea of what was going to happen. Uh -huh. and, uh, so uh, trace uh, trace a little bit. I mean, you've done a lot of different kinds of work. Can you give me give us some examples about the kinds of work you've done over the years? And you uh, know, kind of a. My, I'll, my, I'll give you my main work. Uh, my I guess. Well, okay. Before I started with Blue Shield, I uh, I owned a restaurant in Palm Springs. Uh huh. And I had that for about three or four years, and then. Sold that, and a friend. That's how a friend of mine and another guy we decided to take a vacation and fly down here and meet his mom and dad, uh -huh. set mom and dad, and uh, then then that's how we got to Puerto Vallarta. So I owned a restaurant in Palm Springs called Blue Fox. And Jerry, my brother, worked for me as my bartender. We'll, we'll edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then, uh, uh, it was a bad experience because it's seven days a week, 24 hours a day. It's no fun. Mm -hmm. Everybody makes money except the owner. <laughs> and he's the hardest worker person on, in the business. But it, it was successful. It was a great business. And it was the only bar of its kind in Palm Springs. Because mm -hmm. uh, he... Cathedral City was the town, but that's it's a suburb. Now it's Palm Springs, but yeah. back then it was Cathedral City. And uh, then, then I came back here and I started house sitting for people because I, I didn't really want to go back to Puerto Varta. Here and, in the Lake Chapala area. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah San Juan Cusula. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, well, let me back up. After the restaurant, that's when we came to uh, Palm Springs, and then we came up here to visit his family, and I loved it up here. There's dirt roads, uh, no stop signs. Uh, I rode a horse to, from where I lived downtown to see a movie for five cents, <laughs> and uh, of course you couldn't see the movie, but you paid the five cents. And then I left. Put it on pause. I can't remember what I did. <laughs> I can get out of here. Person in the flood. Uh -huh. What happened to you? 
Oh, I had scratches all over. Uh, Contusions. I had, and... I had to climb up back up the mountain uh -huh. on my hands and knees because I couldn't walk with all the rocks. Right. And uh, my brother was over here uh -huh. watching me go down. So I crawled <laughs> up. I yelled at him, and we went over to the to that house because it had already quit flying yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. All right, so over here, where we are now is uh, kind of a lower level from the estate and what we're going to do, or, or the main house, I guess we'll call it, huh? Uh, we're going to walk up the, uh, <coughs> the stairs here through the gardens and... Uh, and all the stairs are brand new. All the gardens have been redone. All these gardens have been washed away and replanted now or recreated. So we go over here. Hey! <laughs> Now kids, kids, kids. But it was it was so beautiful and peaceful all these years. Then when I lost the house, I had to go live in you know some rental homes because there was no electric or water, plumbing in any of the property. Uh huh. So I moved back over here to this house because it was the least destroyed. They put up, all it had was new, uh, new floor. Uh -huh. And I moved back into it. And uh, they had a big barrel of water out, outside and I used that to wash my dishes and fill the uh, toilets up. Yeah. yeah, you can see if you look up this hill, that's a pretty steep arroyo. Yes. <laughs> and lots of big rocks up there. And the water was dumped on top, um, on this side of the top. <coughs> okay. That's what happened. So, um, Larry, you told me you were telling me before that you've you've traveled quite a bit. Could you kind of start at the beginning and tell me how you came to live here? You know, but where had you been before? Well, this this was quite by accident. <laughs> I'd planned everything else, but uh, Jerry, my brother. Uh, that I have a surprise for you for your birthday in 1994 and I, he never told me where we we're going and then we got to the airport and it was all aboard for Thailand <laughs> <laughs> so Bangkok uh -huh. and we went to Thailand fell in love with that I've never been afraid to travel you know I've always been curious about life but then I got sick over there and Thailand's a half world away from San Francisco. And, uh, oh, this, this is barbecue. Yeah, well, let's step over here in the shade for a minute. It's pretty hot today. Yeah. Well, this is May. April, May. And here we have uh, the queen of the pool. <laughs> yes. <Brandy> Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you don't have to go that far up, you know. Oh, that's suntan lotion. Yeah. Uh, this is where we had a lot of fun. Uh huh. A lot of parties. A lot of, a lot of grilling. And yeah, lots of parties here. <laughs> now this is a nice little grotto. Let's just be filled with booze and food. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you came here. Well, you went to Bangkok, well, and then I where else did you go? I went to Bangkok, and I had already lived in Puerto Vallarta for three years. Uh huh. And I met this lady that owned a restaurant, and I helped her out for something to do. And I called her from San Francisco, and I said, I'm home, I'm ready to go back to Puerto Varda. She said, why don't you just stop by here? And I'd been here 29 years ago. Uh -huh. That's curious. So I said, okay, I'll come and visit for a couple of weeks before I go home to Puerto Varda. And uh, I've stayed ever since. I fell in <laughs> love with the village. The people, the lifestyle, especially the culture, because the, the husbands take care of the kids when they're not working. In the Mexican culture. The, well, yeah, the Mexican culture. And, uh, you know, the women take care of the kids during the day while the men are working, but the men come home and take care of the kids. Mm -hmm. And I, I was very impressed, because that doesn't happen in the States. And instead of running, to get some place, and you know, you never get there anyway. Down here, it took me about a year to learn how not to 
worry about time. It's the first year. It, Mexicans don't have have time, and they don't like to give you bad news. The same concept of time. Yeah, and but they don't like to give you bad news, so they won't call you if they're not coming. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> I learned that. And I confirmed it with all every American down here. <laughs> uh -huh. So, and the word manana doesn't mean tomorrow. It's supposed to. It just means the next time they get here. Uh -huh. well, and you have to learn their culture. So manana could be tomorrow or next month. Uh, yeah, or an hour from now. Uh -huh. But uh, it's just like the word uh, bueno. You answer the phone, bueno. Well, it doesn't mean hello. Mm -hmm. Hola means hello. Yeah. That confused me, but people say bueno down here. <laughs> so, you know, but that's why I like the culture. <clears throat> I like this, this slow living. Mm -hmm. Nothing excites the Mexicans. Even in death, it doesn't excite them. They accept it because they get to go visit once a year the cemetery mm -hmm. on the Day of the Dead. And, and there's a funeral going on down the hill today, right? Yeah, well, yeah, that's the beginning mm -hmm. of tomorrow. And tomorrow they'll bury him. They must have died today. Uh -huh. And uh, so they'll be buried tomorrow. But it, Mexicans see death as, you know, they're going to go bury them because they don't embalm them, so they have to bury them fast. Mm -hmm. And then they, every year on the Day of the Dead, they go visit. The whole family decorates the graves. And it's beautiful. I, I took pictures of that last year. And they go visit every year. Mm -hmm. They bring their, their beer. The men bring their beer. The wives bring all the food. They party. And that's the day they get to visit the dead. Yeah. And so I, you know, the next day they come back to work. <laughs> you know, after somebody's died, yeah. they come back to work that day or the next day. So you've been uh, you've been here a long time, and you obviously like and appreciate the culture. Uh, you don't speak Spanish, do you, or not much? No, I say Spanish. Uh -huh. I don't do conversational Spanish. Okay, so you know some Spanish vocabulary yeah. and so but on. My first six years, I didn't have a car, so I took the bus, <laughs> which is an experience all by itself because I could have a beer <laughs> or a cocktail on the bus. <laughs> Usually, they, they didn't close the door on the bus. And uh, they, there's no back then. There was no bus stop. When somebody's standing on the side of the road, you picked them up. Mm -hmm. Sometimes he'd charge you, or he'd just say hi, and then, or he would stop and go shopping in the store, <laughs> and then come back out and drive us. You never had. And I, I, it didn't work out staying with my friend, so a guy was leaving, so he asked me to house that. So I went from that house to that house to that house. <laughs> I got a reputation from all the Americans that left town, so yes. I, I was the house sitter. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so the, and this is something that you've been doing for quite a while. And, and tell me about six your, months. I was doing tell it for six months. Okay, tell me about here. You've been here for then, this house for a while. Then the last house I house it for. I was leaving on my way out back to Puerto Varta, uh -huh. and uh, the property manager here was my next door neighbor. She said, why don't you just go talk to them because they're leaving tomorrow and they've never had a, a house set <laughs> And I said, okay. And I, then I saw this home and they said, I'll give it to you for three years. You can stay here. Wow. I said, like, okay, three years, fine with me. I've been here now over 11 years <laughs> and uh, the guys never come to visit. so. This is, I mean, this is where I landed on my feet in yeah. my life. Uh, I work three main jobs. I own the restaurant. I work for Blue Shield of California. That's how I met Sharon. And then uh, I worked for Charles Schwab, uh -huh. and he was my last job. And then I went out because of my back. I went on disability, and then it turned into retirement. And so, so 
uh, I've been here ever since. Uh, and, the, and the guys who own this house are successful international interior decorators. Obviously, and, very successful. Uh, they have three homes in New Jersey, beautiful collection Florida, of and here. Of and art. they go all over the world to collect art uh -huh. and pottery and things. And they take sometimes they take their clients shopping. Yeah. And. Uh, they also have a, their own store in New Jersey, and uh -huh. they sell out of that. Where is that, do you know? In what part of the, New Jersey? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. I've never been there, so I, I, I don't know. Huh. So they they come down here maybe, ten, well, they come down ten, t ten days, three or four times a year. Okay. And they only stay ten days. Hmm. Actually, eight. I don't count the day they get here <laughs> and the day they leave. So... They, they stay up here at their house, their main house. I stay down at mine, and if they want, they come down and visit. We have a cocktail, or I'm invited to their parties, and uh -huh. that's all we do, <laughs> you know, because I don't do anything else. You all going to say, tell me what your typical day is like. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, I have no typical day. I do everything I want to do. Uh -huh. uh, I have I've narrowed my friends down to just... A couple, uh -huh. because down here you can get involved in social life, and there's so much social life to mm -hmm. do that you never stop. So you, you, act, I just had to put the brakes on and pick a couple people I wanted to see. Yeah, and, and, and of course you have your brother close by. And, and now he retired here uh, five years ago, so he's here. So that uh -huh. keeps me busy. But my neighbors are international models that have retired down here, and. Uh, so they're my very close friends. So mm -hmm. don't really leave the property that much. I have a beautiful <laughs> pool, beautiful gardens. Yeah. Why? I, I have nothing to do. <laughs> you have maid service. You I have, have two gardeners, gardeners. two maids, uh, two pool guys, a property <laughs> manager. There's, uh -huh. there's no reason to leave the property. The property's over an acre, Yeah. full acre, and it's manicured. Mm -hmm. The gardeners are great. So. After uh, Charles Schwab and I couldn't work on disability, then during I used to come down for vacations, and one day I came down and I said, why am I going back to San Francisco <laughs> just to sit and look out a window? So I moved down uh, to Puerto Varna. Well, that, then that's my next question, really, is why, why do you choose to live here? You could live in California or somewhere. I've been every place, in every place in the world I've wanted to go, I've been. Nothing has ever turned me on except here. Uh -huh. okay. And it's the climate, it's the culture. I, I love the Mexican culture. And it's the, the expats that live here. We have over 7,000 of them here. Uh -huh. uh, you can watch any current movie you want to. So, so you're not isolated. We uh -huh. have phones, we have cable, we have everything we have in the States for less money. Uh -huh. And since I'm, you know, I have a fixed income, this is, this is, I can afford to live in a mansion. <laughs> Which you wouldn't be able to do in Marin County. Couldn't, couldn't do it in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> so what challenges do you think expatriates face living overseas? Do you face any personally yourself? Well, depending on what country overseas. Well, uh, how about here? Yeah, uh, well, the first challenge is to get to know their culture. Because mm -hmm. it's... Totally, in in San Francisco where I live, it was run, 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 talk fast, get your business done. You know, go home on the weekends. You know, clean up, get your clothes ready for Monday morning. And so down here, nobody does that. And uh, you don't know if it's Saturday or Sunday or <laughs> Tuesday. But the the Mexicans, you learn they they don't like to give you bad news. If they break something, they won't tell you. Uh, the day they want to go on vacation is that day that they tell you they want to go on vacation. Uh, if you fire them, you have to give them a large bonus for every year they've worked here. Uh -huh. If they quit, you don't have to give them anything. Uh, the laws are so in favor of the Mexican, which is totally logical. Mm -hmm. But no, I learned here that I can get up anytime I want, go to bed anytime I want, and Sunday is not the day that I have to get ready to go to work the next day. <laughs> and I learn how to retire. I truly retire. Yeah, truly retire in mm -hmm. a beautiful estate. 
So, um, have you faced any personal challenges living here? I mean, aside from the sounds like the flood was was a major challenge. No, I no. See, that's that's what I love about it. There are no challenges here. Uh -huh. I, I, you know, I don't. I, could, I couldn't give you a challenge except for the flood. Uh huh. Because uh, when I didn't have a car, I had a bus. <laughs> okay. You know, when I had a car, that was a challenge to keep it running. <laughs> <laughs> and the mechanics are great down here. Mm -hmm. Everything down here. I, no, I can't tell you a challenge. Uh, can you tell me a, a story that uh, illustrates uh, something about your maybe? Uh, a best experience or a real good experience uh, that illustrates, you know, your experience abroad. Well, in, in other countries I've been to, people basically stayed, you know, expats usually had their own own thing going. Uh -huh. You know, this is the only country where they share. They share, they're, they're not afraid of the expats. Okay. And they're not intimidated by us. And, uh, we're not intimidated by them. I think it's just a really friendly community. That's why I fell in love with it. There's nothing. There's nothing I could want for down here. Okay, that's important. And uh, you, your orientation, or, or was based probably on your experience of traveling and living in other countries. So you did have some preparation. Yes, and I'm not. I'm not here. afraid to try any country. <clears throat> this is the only one that turned me on. Uh -huh. You know, this is. When you walk, when I walked into a, a restaurant or a store, somebody would say hi down here, an yeah. expat. Yeah. You know, so you get to know them. Uh -huh. At some point, you get too many friends, and you have to <laughs> weed them out. But once Jerry got down here, then I had family. Uh -huh. So that made this more home sure. than it was when I was just living by myself. So. Um do you have any advice for Americans who might be coming to Mexico or, and facing... Yes. Just accept it for what it is. Don't, if you're going to come down here, don't gripe about anything because it's not your country. Uh -huh. It's theirs. Accept them for what they are and like them for what they are. And don't expect anything that you're used to to happen. Mm -hmm. It'll happen, but it won't happen at the time you think it's supposed to happen. And if, if they have... A big party all night long next door. That's the way they live. Yeah. So if, if you don't if you don't want to to accept them for what they are, then don't come down. Yeah. One of the stories that uh, I heard during and I don't think we recorded before, which I'd like to record now, was about uh, a local guy who um, there was all this noise going on out in the street, and he was an American expat. Do you, do you want to tell me that story? You know, no, that's not my story. That's no, I know it's, story. it's Jerry's story. I, I don't know it. I oh, really okay. Don't okay. Remember it enough. Oh, except, Jerry will tell us except, about it. Well, that's why I'm telling you, except what's <laughs> going on down here. And don't, because that man was rude. Oh, they were having a, uh, a funeral. Somebody right. just died. Right. They closed the roads, which they did on me when I first moved up here. And I didn't know what they were doing, but I backed up and went the other direction because I knew something was going on. Uh -huh. but, no, this, this guy, there, a lot of people, or not a lot, people expect you, they don't know what a funeral is down here. And they really, Mexicans take funerals seriously because mm -hmm. they only last one day. And uh, <laughs> no, he was, he had to get someplace and he didn't want to be bothered, just like in the States. Yeah, came he out had, and shouted at the he people. He didn't have time, get out of here, you know, and yeah, yeah. somebody explained to him. And yep. then I don't know what happened. That's Jerry's story. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just, I just know we'll I've seen it happen before. Is there anything else you'd like to comment on uh, related to your experience or the, your experiences of living overseas and living here? Experience overseas, other places, I never had a good experience. Uh, here, I, I, I lived in Madrid, Spain. That was kind of fun, but that was during the Franco rule and, you know, communist. <laughs> type of regime and a dictator. So, uh, no, this is, I, I, many people, many people I know land here, some people in two weeks buy a home. Some people do it smart or at least for a year and find out where a good location is. Because if you don't like church bells, <coughs> don't, don't move next to a church. Because <laughs> they have a holiday here at least once every two weeks. Uh -huh. And the church bells ring at 5 o'clock in the morning. And uh, it can drive you crazy 
But I see I've accepted it all. Yeah. Because it's better. It's, the alternative is San Francisco noise, hustle and bustle, lights, sirens, sirens, <laughs> horns, and uh, if you notice, there's no noise out here. Uh -huh. Yeah. If I didn't have my two dogs, it would be very lonely. Mm -hmm. Take a picture of my dogs. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. We'll say hello. Do you want to introduce these, them? These are my non. These are your two dogs. companions. These are my two watch dogs that don't really watch anything. Tell us their names. Uh, the white one is Samba. Samba. Now I name these, and the real German Shepherd here is Tango. Tango. But I named them for their dancing, because when they were young, they <laughs> they played and, and they looked like they were dancing. Oh, so fuck. That's Samba and Tango, the dances. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I've experienced them for the last uh, five days or so, and they've been really, really great dogs, and and uh, sound like good guard dogs too when but, they hear something but at night. If something happens, you know, because we have so many workers on this property yeah. that they're used to people, but if I tell them uh -huh. that I don't like them or tell them to go get them, they they turn on them and uh -huh. they'll they'll go protect me. All right. And that's what I like. Yeah. And uh, since you guys have been here, they haven't been able to get on the porch. <laughs> that's driving them crazy. <laughs> so. Oh, they, they don't bother us. But. No, because they're locked out. Oh. <laughs> well. No, it, it, the, the, this is my companion on the mountain. Sure. And so that's, it helps me stay here. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, we want to thank you very much for being such a gracious host and letting us stay at uh, share your house with you and, and showing us around. And we'll take a little bit more time to shoot a couple of pictures up on the hillside. But uh, it's a great place to be. And thanks again for your generosity. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. And for contributing to the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do I get paid? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we just cut off that part. <laughs>